Welcome to our Pentecost service of Holy Communion. It's also known as the Eucharist, the Thanksgiving and the Lord's Supper. You may wish to get a small amount of wine and bread so you can more actively participate uh, in this service today. At Pentecost, we celebrate the giving of the Holy Spirit to the Church. And this was the fulfilment of the promise of God the Father going right back to the prophet Joel. The Lord be with you and also with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, Alleluia. A prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Joy. 
our Lord's instruction to us is this. Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. We do things wrong from time to time and we need to confess to God. So that there's if anything now that you need to confess to God, in a few moments of silence, make your confession to him now. What God has prepared for those who love him, he has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything. Therefore, let us together in penitence open our hearts to the Lord who has prepared good things for those who love him. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Now the assurance of God's forgiveness. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins. Heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. The words of the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The prayer of the day, the Collect for Pentecost. O God, who at this time taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort through the merits of Christ Jesus our Saviour, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now we're going to have our reading and uh, Diane's going to bring us uh, the reading from the book of Acts.
Today's reading is taken from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. The Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed like tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard the sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Pentecost explained in three minutes. We read about the story of Pentecost in the book of Acts in the Bible, which was written by St. Luke to explain the journey and life of the church right after Jesus ascended into heaven. Remember that from our last video? Yeah, so Pentecost in the Greek language Pentecoste actually means 50th because in the Jewish tradition, which Jesus and his disciples were a part of, Pentecost happened 50 days after the Passover. You know, that's when Jesus and his disciples had that last supper. Nowadays in the church, Pentecost signifies the final day of the season of Easter where we've been celebrating Jesus' resurrection and ascension into heaven. We sometimes call Pentecost the birthday of the church. We do this because it's kind of like the day the church was born. 
It's the day the disciples and Mary were filled with the Holy Spirit. So, what actually happened on Pentecost? Well, all the disciples were together in a house in Jerusalem when suddenly a sound like a crazy intense wind came and filled the place. Then, what looked like fire came down and rested on each of their heads. At that point, they were filled with the Holy Spirit, which allowed them to speak in all different languages. Yay for low teachers! Viva! So at that time in Jerusalem, there were heaps of people from all different nations. Parthenians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Porteus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. No Australians, unfortunately. Which is weird, because every time I travel, I always seem to run into Australians. Anyway. When these people heard the sound, they came running to the house where the disciples were. And they were super confused, because... They could all hear the disciples speaking in their own languages. Huh? So, Peter gets up and explains to the crowd, <clears throat> Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and for your children and for all people, for all whom the Lord our God will call. So 3,000 people dedicated their lives to Jesus that day. 3,000! And people kept coming to the church from that day onwards. Until today, 2,000 years later, there are over 2.5 billion people following Jesus. So, what does this mean for us today? Well, remember how Jesus promised to his disciples, I will be with you always, when he ascended into heaven? This is him following through on that promise. He sent His Holy Spirit to fill each of us up. You may not see us with tongues of fire on our head or speaking 20 different languages, but even better than that, you will see us with patience, kindness, joy, love, faithfulness, peace, and goodness. Happy birthday, church. Happy Pentecost. But why happy? Why celebrate? What is Pentecost? Pentecost is the Jewish festival of Shavuot, the festival of weeks. It's one of the four great religious festivals of the Jewish year, together with the Passover, the Feast of the Tents, and the Day of Atonement. It's also the time of year when Jews celebrate and remember the giving of the Ten Commandments to Moses on Mount Sinai. So why don't we call it Shavuot? Well, we use the Greek word Pentecost. It comes from the word for 50 in Greek. And this festival takes place 50 days, seven weeks, from the Passover. It also, in old times, marked the completion of the barley harvest. It's a bit early for the barley harvest here in the UK. For Christians, it refers to the 50 days that have elapsed since the resurrection of Jesus. And those of us with long memories will recall this time being called Whitson. And if you go back even further, Whitson was when baptism candidates would dress in white, hence Whit or White Sunday. Yes, but what is Pentecost? What, what, what exactly are we remembering? We're remembering the events that are recorded by Luke in the Acts of the Apostles. We are celebrating a very specific historic occasion when the Holy Spirit came in power on the first group of disciples, both men and women, in Jerusalem. Now, was there any special reason why God chose that time and place for the outpouring of the Spirit? Yes, there was. 
The time was chosen for maximum impact, not just for the followers of Jesus, but for the wider world. Jerusalem at that time of year was packed with visitors, pilgrims from abroad. Jewish communities existed throughout the Mediterranean world and beyond. Jews and converts to Judaism, they travelled from all points of the compass to celebrate the festival in the Holy City. Many had come from the extreme east of the Roman Empire, Persia and Iran, and others had come from what we now call Iraq and Turkey. They'd come from North Africa and even from the far west, Rome, the heart of empire. They came to Jerusalem with their diverse local languages, although many would speak Greek, which was the common language of the empire. And some, but by no means all, would speak Hebrew or Aramaic. So, it was a great melting pot of people that was in Jerusalem. And I'm sure it wasn't coincidence that the Lord chose to pour out his spirit upon Jesus' small band of 120 followers at this time. Those that responded to the message of Peter's sermon and were baptised were clearly not all locals. According to Luke's account, most were visitors. And what happened to them after the celebrations of Shavuot were over? Well, they returned to their homes, to their families, to their communities, to their cities, with a new message in their minds and a new commitment in their hearts. So, what is Pentecost? It's the first missionary outreach of the church. Now, some people think that the first missionary expansion of the church followed the martyrdom of Stephen and the persecution that followed. But surely the first missionary expansion came in the days and the weeks following Pentecost, when all these new believers in Jesus of Nazareth as the long-promised Messiah returned to their communities and shared what they had seen and what they had heard in Jerusalem. What is Pentecost? Isn't it about being Pentecostal, about miracles, speaking in tongues? After all, when the Spirit came upon the small band of Jesus' followers, there was a sound like a gale blowing through the place. And there was, and I quote, what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. And after that, they spoke in tongues, although the words in Greek could well mean languages. Whatever the case, it was staggering, amazing, that all these foreign visitors to Jerusalem could hear the disciples praising God in their own local languages. We're told that the people who heard them were, quote, amazed and perplexed. So you could say that this was a fairly spectacular, a fairly Pentecostal way of starting the Christian church. But is that the main point of Pentecost? The signs and the wonders? Well, if you look at this second chapter of Acts, you find that the signs and wonders are confined to just a few verses. Most of the chapter is devoted to the speech that Peter gave to the crowds after the signs and wonders had got the crowd's attention. From verse 14 to verse 41, it's Peter speaking, not in tongues, but in Aramaic or Greek. It probably, probably the latter, because a lot of these visitors to Jerusalem would not be Hebrew speakers. 
But of course, we need to note that Peter had been given a new courage, a new confidence through the empowering of the Holy Spirit. So you can't separate the two. Peter's powerhouse sermon follows the giving of the Holy Spirit. So, should we be also celebrating the first gospel sermon at Pentecost? Definitely we should. Why? Because the words of Peter to the crowds are so full of truth and insight. They celebrate the arc of history. And Peter's sermon makes a strong appeal to his fellow Jews by referring closely to the scriptures, what we call the Old Testament. And his main focus is on the prophetic nature of those scriptures. That they point forward, not just to a Messiah, but to the one so recently crucified and raised to life, Jesus of Nazareth. It's worth pointing out that Peter and his friends had been with Jesus Christ off and on for most of the 50 days since the Passover and that they had witnessed his ascension just 10 days previously. In Peter's sermon, there are three direct references to the scriptures, one to a minor prophet and two to the Psalms. But I just want to have a look at part of the first. Listen again to these words from the prophet Joel. And afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Fantastic words. Now, Joel was writing these words at a time of great need. Swarms of locusts had devoured the people's crops, ruined the harvest. There was famine in the land. And Joel, in his prophecy, looks forward to a time when there will be once again plenty in the land and the Lord's favour will be apparent. More than that, he anticipates a time when God's spirit will be poured out on all humanity. That the privilege of God's intimate presence by his spirit will not be confined just to the priests, to the prophets and to the rulers. And Peter links this prophecy with the miraculous signs of what had happened to the disciples between eight and nine o'clock that morning. Now, it could be argued, if you really want to be pernickety, that there may not have been any daughters among the people with, with the women in that group. And that perhaps there were no old men either, or, and perhaps there were no servants but surely that's, that's not the point. That's being too literal. The point surely is that the giving of the Holy Spirit is not going to be confined to a particular gender or class or age group. Even servants, which would include slaves in Roman households, even servants will receive their share of the Spirit, it says. Now, if you think about it, Peter, he was hardly a Lord Snooty. He was just a Galilean fisherman, an upcountry nobody. And he comes from up north to boot. No, everyone, says Joel, who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. That's the final triumphant phrase from this prophecy. So what is Pentecost about? It's about God's agenda. The Spirit of God is available to everyone, not just as a gift to be enjoyed, 
but as a ministry to be exercised. Because, as the prophecy says, the young ones will see visions to share. The old will be given dreams to share. Sons and daughters will prophesy to be shared. You, you could say that this is the democratization of the spirit. Wow, what a word. It is a pattern for church practice, but a pattern that has so often been ignored by the church in the past. And no doubt Peter and the apostles, let's be honest, had not yet learnt the full implications of this prophecy because Peter was still thinking in terms of Jewish men and Jewish women or converts to Judaism, the sort of people he was talking to in the streets of Jerusalem. He had yet to learn the difficult lesson that God's democratic embrace also extended to Gentiles, the non-Jews who form most of the population of the Roman Empire. Of course, there's so much more in Peter's address to the crowds, even in the prophecy of Joel. I haven't been able to cover all the verses, but there's just not time now to explore fully. Best thing for us all to do is to get hold of our Bibles and read Acts chapter 2 on our own and soak up the words. So what is Pentecost? Pentecost is a challenge and an invitation. For the church today, facing a crisis in recruitment to the priesthood, surely the words of Joel are a challenge to us to take hold with confidence of the promise that all those who've received the Spirit of Christ will have a role to play in the unfolding of God's purposes. It's what the rector has so often emphasised in his ministry to us and its truth is not diminished but rather it's underlined by the fact that David will be leaving us soon. So what is Pentecost? It's all those things I've mentioned. It is Shavuot, the Jewish festival of weeks. It's the marking of 50 days since the Passover and the resurrection of Jesus. It's the outpouring of the Spirit on the first disciples, 120 men and women. It's the memory of the first public gospel sermon about Jesus the Messiah. It's about the first spreading of the gospel message from Jerusalem to other lands and places and languages. It's the birthday of the church. The global, multicultural, multilingual, multinational, 2,000-year-old family of Christian believers. It's about being given courage to do things that without the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, we would never even contemplate. It's about the promise of God's intimate presence for everyone, regardless of age, gender, status, or background. And if that isn't enough cause for celebration, then I don't know what is. And now we affirm our faith. We say together in faith, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty, who was and is and is to come. We believe in God the Father, who created all things, for by his will they were created and have their being. We believe in God the Son, who was slain, for with his blood he purchased us for God from every tribe and language, from every people and nation. We believe in God the Holy Spirit. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come, even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. And now Pat's going to lead us in our prayers of intercession.
Let us pray for the church and for the world and let us thank God for his goodness. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. We pray for our church, for the worldwide church, our links in Uganda and Hyderabad, for the persecuted church, those who cannot worship as we can. We pray for the church in England, for our Archbishop, for our Bishop Julie and John, the Bishop of Barking, and for our Rector David, on this his last Sunday, worshipping with us and leading us. We pray for him and Christina in the ne next phase of their life that you will be with them and bless them and their ministry. We pray for Tracy Nutter as she remains to lead us and our church wardens, Jackie and Wayne, all the PCC and everyone who helps to make our church work. May it continue to be a loving family and a blessing to those who belong and a witness to those who may be called to find you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our government, for our Queen and the Royal Family and for all that has to be done to keep this country running and a place of safety for, for those of us who live here. We thank you for the work that's been done to provide us with vaccines against the pandemic. And we ask you to bless our government in all that they plan to do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for making us people who have friends and families, people that we relate to. We ask, we thank you for them and we ask you to bless us in all the relationships that we have. Give grace to us our families and friends, and to all our neighbours, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. We pray for the peace of the world. There is so much discord particularly flower, flowering, as it were, in Israel and Palestine at the moment. But Syria and Iraq and Iran, the Lebanon, many places in Africa find conflict and South America. It's just 
We only hear what comes on the news and can bring that to you, but know that you have in your hand everywhere that there is conflict. Be with the people who suffer and bless all those who try to help. The peacemakers, the agencies that bring relief and those of us who just pray. Lord, we pray for the needs of your world, our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those for whom this day will seem long and hard, for those in hospital or ill at home, those struggling with despair or depression, those finding difficulties with their finance because of the influence of the lockdown on their work places. Lord, all who suffer. When you were on this earth, you had great compassion and we know that you are a God of compassion. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in their body, mind or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them joy in your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And today we are celebrating Pentecost, when your spirit changed fearful men into bold preachers. And we pray now for your Holy Spirit to be outpoured The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy and peace. Father, we know that our world needs love and harmony. Come, bless us and fill us with your Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is patience, kindness and goodness. Father, we know that our world is starved of compassion and true fellowship. Come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. The fruit of the spirit is faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Father, we know that our world is short of truth and justice. Come, bless us and fill us with your spirit. Send us out in his power to live and work to your praise and glory through him to whom we belong, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now the peace. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us and as a pledge of what is to come has given the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you.
open the heavens, Lord our God, and send your transforming spirit on us and on these gifts. May we, who are baptised into Christ, be ready to share his cup of suffering and strengthened to serve him forever. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. This day we give you thanks because in fulfilment of your promise, you pour out your Spirit upon us, filling us with your gifts, leading us into all truth and unifying people of many tongues in the confession of one faith. Your Spirit gives us grace to call you Father, to proclaim your Gospel to all nations and to serve you as a royal priesthood. Therefore, we join our voice with angels and archangels and with all those in whom the Spirit dwells to proclaim the glory of your name for ever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence, his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bring him before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And we join together in the Lord's Prayer as we say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. 
Alleluia. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The body of Christ broken for you and for me. The blood of Christ shed for you and for me. <clears throat> Let us pray. Faithful God, who fulfilled the promise of Easter by sending to us your Holy Spirit and opening to every race and nation the way of life eternal. Open our lips by your Spirit that every tongue may tell of your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And to together now we thank God saying, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you, our souls and bodies, to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. O oh God of burning. Oh God of burning.
Now I'm going to ask you to respond in this service by an act of faith. <clears throat> if you'd like to be filled with God's Holy Spirit, or you would like God's healing power to come upon you, maybe you would like both. Then I'm going to invite you now just to stand up where you are. And I'm just going to pray and ask God to visit you right where you are as you stand. As a further act of faith, you might like to just put your hands out in front of you as though you were going to receive something. So please stand now if you desire to. Heavenly Father, I ask you to bless those who are now standing as an act of faith. I pray for those who wish to be filled with your Holy Spirit. I pray now, Lord, that you will send down upon them, each one, your Holy Spirit in power and fill them. And for each person, O Lord, who is standing because they desire your healing, I pray that you'll release your healing power upon them right now. I ask you to come in power right now. And in Jesus' name, I rebuke any sickness and I command it to go. Lord, may healing come. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. The blessing. The spirit of truth leads you into all truth, give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and strengthen you to proclaim the word and works of Christ and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you to remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.